If you find yourself experiencing energy dips on a regular basis, then you're not alone. A survey for the National Sleep Foundation in the US found 44% of adults feel sleepy between two to four days every week. In the UK, a YouGov poll found one in eight adults felt tired all the time, with another quarter feeling fatigued most of the time. So what's causing this fatigue and what can we do about it? Well, I've scanned the expert advice to bring you this guide to getting your energy back. I'm Claire Johnston, a journalist on a mission to understand how to age well, look and feel good for longer and share what I discover with you on YouTube, podcast platforms and my website, honest.scott. And today we'll cover everything from sleep quality to supplements and the lifestyle tips that can make a big difference to your energy levels. Now, it's important to start by saying that ongoing fatigue, lethargy, daytime sleepiness or weakness could be a sign of an underlying condition or deficiency. So it's always important to talk to a doctor first if you're experiencing anything like that and just get it checked out. But of all else as well, as the stats I shared show, dips in energy are quite common, especially as we age, and can be helped through lifestyle changes. So there are some more obvious lifestyle culprits for feeling tired, and lack of sleep and poor sleep quality are major ones. It's recommended that adults get a minimum of seven hours sleep every night. And for those of us who've been told we snore or suffers of sleep apnea, where some sleepers briefly stop breathing, both of those conditions are going to affect sleep quality and should be tackled. Alcohol is another significant drain on sleep quality and will rob you of your energy, as we heard recently from Dr. Brooke Scheller, which I'll link below. Lack of sleep essentially means our bodies skip time in the repair shop. And as we age, we need all the repair time we can get to support our muscles, immunity, and other critical functions. Now let's talk about supplements. And if you're lacking in energy, it's a good idea to get your vitamin, mineral and iron levels checked. But sometimes what comes back as sufficient levels of a particular vitamin doesn't mean you're operating at the optimal levels needed to feel your best. B vitamins are important because they help us convert food into energy and particularly as we age, we become more susceptible to nutritional deficiencies. And one of the most important vitamins that we need to keep an eye on in later life is B12 because deficiencies are not uncommon over the age of 50. As you age, your digestive system doesn't produce as much acid, which reduces your body's ability to absorb vitamin B12. And it's thought more than 3% of adults over 50 have seriously low levels of B12, and up to 20% of older adults may have borderline levels of vitamin B12. Fatigue and muscle stiffness or weakness are a big sign of this deficiency, and it's one I've been close to because my 81-year-old mum, just five or six years ago, wasn't doing so well. She was feeling very tired and weak and her doctor picked up a B12 deficiency. She now gets an injection every eight weeks and it's been nothing short of life-changing for her. So this vitamin has the potential to make a big difference and is well worth getting tested for. B3 or niacin and its derivatives, NMN and NR, have also become popular for boosting energy because it's been linked with helping increase levels of NAD in our cells. Personally, I alternate between taking NMN one day, which I've found helpful for my energy levels, and I take a multivitamin on the other day with an active or methylated B vitamin complex. Studies have also shown that vitamin D deficiency can cause fatigue, so it's another important one to look at. You can buy a cheap vitamin D test at a pharmacy. Personally, I take a 5000 IU D3 supplement, uh, which also contains vitamins K2, which helps transport vitamin D to your bones and teeth, and magnesium, which is also needed to metabolize vitamin D. I take it every other day, and there is vitamin D in the multivitamin I take on the alternate day. So I will link to my full supplement regimen below. Dehydration is another major contributor to fatigue. Around 60% of our body weight is water and it carries nutrients to our cells and takes away waste. So for optimal function, we need optimal amounts of it. When we're low on fluids, you can literally feel drained. And it's commonly recommended that you drink eight eight ounce or 237 milliliter glasses of water a day, amounting to nearly two liters. And I would recommend starting your day with a large glass of water as just a good habit to get into and something I'm trying to get my husband to do daily. 
he's editing this, so I'm just taking my opportunity to drum that message in. Because if I get an energy slump or if I'm feeling unwell or headachey, I will often throw back a couple of glasses of water and it's amazing the difference that water alone can make to how you feel. And in my view, it's the best instant energizer there is. Stress is another big contributor to fatigue. A 2022 study of more than 16,000 workers in China found those who reported being stressed were twice as likely to feel fatigued. And something I find really helpful for both calming stress, but also as an energy booster in the day, is to sit down and try to clear my mind of thoughts. Often I have to count backwards to do that. And I breathe deeply from my stomach so I can feel my diaphragm rising and falling. And studies do support this because deep breathing has been found to reduce heart rate and cortisol or stress hormone levels. But not only does it calm you down, I actually feel it helps revive me too. And if I have an energy slump, then I drink a glass or two of water, sit down and do as I've described for about 10 minutes, clearing my thoughts, breathing deeply, and it feels like I've had a nap. So it's a really reviving thing to do. What we eat also massively impacts our energy and is closely linked to our blood sugar levels. So basically, if your blood sugar level or your glucose level dips too low or spikes too high, it can affect your body's functioning. And foods that are high in carbohydrates, those sugary but also starchy foods like bread made with refined flours, pastries, cookies, even white rice have what's called a higher glycemic load, causing your blood sugar to rise and fall sharply after you eat them. In the short term, glucose spikes cause us to feel more hungry, experience energy dips and tiredness and contribute to poor sleep, headaches and brain fog. But left unchecked, and particularly as we age, if we allow glucose to routinely flood our cells, it can cause inflammation and a buildup of fat, most obviously around the belly, and can lead to more serious health issues, including type 2 diabetes, heart disease, liver disease, cancer, and even Alzheimer's. Your body digests complex carbs more slowly than simple carbs, making them a steadier energy source and helping you avoid blood sugar spikes and crashes that really affect energy as well as our overall health. So in general, we want to opt for natural whole foods with a low glycemic index whose sugars are absorbed slowly, including whole grains, high fiber vegetables, nuts, and healthy oils such as olive oil. In general, high carbohydrate foods have the highest glycemic indexes. Lastly, it won't come as a surprise, but it's hopefully a useful reminder that regular exercise will make a positive difference to your energy levels. That's because it can improve your muscle strength and boost your endurance. Exercise sends oxygen and nutrients to your tissues and improves your cardiovascular function. At a cellular level, physical exertion prompts your body to produce more mitochondria inside your muscle cells, and mitochondria are the powerhouses of cells because they create energy out of the dietary glucose we eat and oxygen from the air. And when we have more oxygen circulating, that also supports the mitochondria's productivity levels. So we're firing on all cylinders. So these are some of the primary ways we can boost our day-to-day -day energy levels as well as our overall health. If you found the information helpful and you haven't already, then I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel and following the show on a podcast platform too, if you enjoy podcasts. As always, I love to hear your thoughts and experiences. So let me know if you found this episode helpful and the things that you do for boosting your own energy. And remember, you can find more information and advice around healthy aging and skincare on my website, honest.scott. And if you scroll to the bottom of any page, you can sign up for my monthly newsletter where I round up all the latest news and content shared across my platforms so you don't miss out. For now, thanks for joining me today.